welcome to Doctor Who Info. We've got first of the interviews of the bloggers. We've decided instead of trying to sort of hitch up with uh, various people uh, online from the show and around the show, we decided to sort of hit the people who you probably read about the most or you read about what they're writing about. Um, so, and the first in the line is uh, Stephen Schapansky, who's over in Canada from uh, Radio Free Scaro. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm great, actually. You just told me you've got snow over there. Yeah, it's about a foot a foot of snow this morning, and it's only eleven twenty in the morning. So um, I'm looking forward to digging out from uh, from this tomorrow. Well, this actually, well, if it actually lasts, then it's an ideal weather to sort of cuddle up on the couch and and watch the fiftieth. Then, isn't it? It's not bad, except I'm going to go see it in the theater. So I'm hoping this dissipates in a week's time. Otherwise, uh, I will. Um, it'll be an interesting trip all the way to the south end of the city to go. I can watch imagine. This, uh... But there again, you'll be on a high on the way back anyway, and plenty to talk about, no doubt. <laughs> Just a bit, yeah. What's actually been happening over there in Canada with the run-up? Because Canada and America seem to be on par with us and actually seem to, up to the beginning of last week, had a little more than we were having. We had a drought of Doctor Who since the uh, name of the Doctor. Yeah, um, a Space uh, airs Doctor Who in Canada here, and they sort of play off of whatever BBC America is going to do. Um, mm. In a way, we, we only just got Doctor Who revisited, I think, in September here. Okay, uh, it's been spinning around like two, twice a weekend, and everything. But uh, there are, I think, eight or nine cities that are showing the premiere of the uh, the cinema screening of the Day of the Doctor on November twenty third, which is alarming considering there's only eleven in the U S. So it's 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 even more nationwide here in Canada, and then there's a, a whole bunch more on the twenty fifth as well. So it's um it, it's it's becoming a bigger deal. I'm seeing a lot of actual like you know media actually starting to report on this, which is which is not common uh, for Doctor Who in Canada. It's a good thing to see. I think there's um um. I think there's been a bit of a uh, we've uh, there's a bit of a bitter taste in a lot of who fans. I, I do try and communicate more on a base level with who fans rather than sort of trying to talk with the stars. And with my, my Twitter feed sort of reflects in between the major news um, what people are doing. Like we've got a girl over here who cooks amazing Doctor Who style cakes, and she's really involved in loads of bits and bobs, and she's made in, made herself into a little celebrity. But we didn't even get revisited over here. So, no, it's it's airing on like, on like Watch or something. It's not even on the BBC, is it? No, it's really weird. It's like uh, we we had nothing from the name of the Doctor finished, and the most we had was that Save the Day um, blazer that came in between, and that just dropped itself in the middle of two nothing to do with sci-fi programs on a Saturday night. Just a basically the date with Save the Day in gold, and and everybody was like. Is that it? You had probably millions of Whovians sat around the television in, in Britain waiting for this thing, hoping it would be great. And it was just that flash up came up for about five seconds. It's it's it seems to be a bit of a slow boil throughout the course of the, the summer, I thought. And then all now all of a sudden, though, in sort of November, it's it's it's, it's almost too much going on. You know, I'm, I'm like yeah, having I to check each day to see what's actually airing uh, in, on the BBC or in Canada. Yeah. Where, celebrations another another thing that we're actually doing is um another thing we've been talking about is uh is is i've been talking to paul g who does who news you know the app oh and yeah he yep. said that he's he's got it had a continual role but you're right it seems to be in the last two weeks particularly in the uk they just seem to have just it's like emptying a sack of letters onto the mm -hmm. side of the, the wall and everything so it seems to be quite quite a strange um thing i think there's a lot of people quite bitter about the lack of uh, i think a lot of young whovians would would have liked to have had the doctor who revisited because although a lot of us older ones and a lot of the people with jobs can afford it have the old dvds a lot of the younger ones don't have access to dvds and the black and whites and stuff like that it is a shame uh, i um, I was glad to see BBC America devote like they've been airing them once a month starting in yeah. January, and and I thought they're 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 a great introduction. You know, I I remember watching them. I was entertained enough by them. You know, I've been yeah. a fan since I was eight. I don't need to know any of this, but it's no. just good to see it sometimes um, packaged together in an entertaining fashion that, yeah. that is is entertaining for old fans like me and for new ones too. What's your opinion on the bombshell that was Paul McGann on Thursday? Um, uh, I, I, unfortunately, I, I say this now, and then yeah. I think I heard, a, I heard, um, some pretty definitive proof that, that, that McGann was actually going to be in yeah, it. Yeah, he think... was actually going to do something. And I was kind of like, oh no, I kind of would have 
didn't want to know that. This is like back in May, I think it was, when they were shooting that, um, the Day of the Doctor. And so I knew it was coming, but I sort of put it out of the back of my mind. And I knew it, something was coming on the red button on the Saturday, whatever that is. Uh, but And then it came out, I woke up to it, and all of a sudden, all that pre-knowledge sort of went out the window. I was like, oh my God, McGann, you know, because you can hear that he's going to be in something. Yeah. But then once you see him, and he's in that costume, and he's in the new style of show, and he's just brilliant as well. It was you know, I've watched that two or three times. Um, just, you know, jaw dropped, just in amazement about how wonderful he was in that. I think it's really good. If you want, if you haven't seen it already, there's a couple of guys, there's four guys, one from Scotland, one from England, one from uh, America, the States, and, and another guy, I think he's from Europe, I don't know where. But they kind of got together, and they're called the Real Whovians. It's worth looking up, and what they did was all of them saw it apart from the American fan. And he based, what they did was they put the webcam on, they did a Google Hangout live, and uh -huh. they didn't tell him that Paul McGann was coming in. And they just basically let him watch it. And it's the video of him watching it and them giggling at the bottom of the screen. And oh, his, great. his expression was like it started. You saw the spaceship flying in, that girl screaming about medical aid. That didn't, she didn't need medical aid. And then his face was just absolute, just a beauty. And it was just like, oh, my God. And he swore. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he was just pure, like, holy, you know what I mean? But yeah. I think I think that was, I think that hit with a lot of people, and I think what was really good was the BBC uh, on YouTube in particular. I know a lot of fans who uploaded it as well made a big effort not to have Paul McGann in the screen flash. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of people when they caught up, and the blogging didn't start for about four hours after from all the websites and things like that about it. So I think that was quite nice that that happened. Yeah, we we posted it on RadioFreeScarlet dot com, yeah. and and we're very careful not to mention anything about it because we didn't want that that initial moment. You know, I'm the you know I'm a doctor, but probably not the one you're expecting. That, that moment is a crashes into the opening <laughs> credits. You just Don't... it's just it'd be cruel to spoil that for anyone. Do you know? I, 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 there's a lot of people over here talking online, and everybody's saying that uh, Paul McGann has never. I think the only thing Paul McGann was bitter about was. Uh, I mean, you may have spoken to the guy, but. Uh, I think he was bitter about uh, just not having more of an opportunity. Because I, I, I had no doubt from the movie. I mean, a lot of people knock it, but I had no doubt from the movie that he would have made an excellent Doctor. And that proved it at eight minutes. Yeah, he, it was an assured start, uh, probably more so than any Doctor, until I, I want to say Matt Smith, yeah. uh, who wowed me in the 11th hour. But, I mean, his performance, you know, as as a first performance as a Doctor is is quite stunning in the TV movie, and he certainly is the, the, the best thing about it. Yeah. And it's, just, it's kind of sad that, you know, the next time we see him on screen is some, you know, 20 years later, and he's regenerating <laughs> into the next one. It's sad. But doesn't he, I think he looks young enough to pull it off still. I think he's one of the few doctors yeah. that have, haven't really, even Matt Smith, if you look at him from the beginning in, in the 11th hour and you look at him now, he, he, he even he's showing signs of wear over the three to four years he's been in it. It's amazing, isn't it, how yeah. much one could age. But, of course, we never saw McGann, you know, age as well. We, we're, you know, if you're listening to the audios, you can still hear that same voice that you saw yes. on the TV movie, but you're not necessarily seeing They haven't even used... Uh, promotional photos, new promotional photos no. until like two years ago. So it that that vision of McGann has always sort of stayed constant, I think, in people's minds. I kind of like that they've uh, they paid her. Um, uh, I think they had to pay a, a, a homage to Big Big Finish in somehow, and I think that was yeah. the perfect way. It was. It, I mean, I'm I'm not a giant listener to audio drama in general, but no. it was. I, so I didn't necessarily get the reference. I did know that, that he was probably quoting the names of the companions. And, and it was a nice hat tip to Big Finish and certainly legitimized their, their canon of stuff because McGann is the audio doctor. He was he yeah. basically was, you know, his fan base exists for the Eighth Doctor because of the audio. It's not because people, you know, <laughs> just were yeah. all climbing around watching the TV movie on New Year's <laughs> Eve every single year, you know. A lot of people now, and I know a lot of people are tweeting the BBC saying like, now, right now we've got Paul McGann back. We, there's another thing that's a big cause of angst that's probably, it was probably the wisest thing the BBC could have done is release it last week or the week before, that there is not going to be any Doctor Who till next August after Christmas. And that's a big, that's a big gap. That's a huge gap for something. Um, and I, me as a young, me as a guy, I remember being a young boy and watching, starting with John Pertwee and Tom Baker was my doctor. And I remember, um, I remember watching it from the regeneration in the winter evenings at this time of year.
Uh, so it's kind of, I like the seasonal, I like the way it's dropped in, but it's a long gap in between Christmas and New Year, uh, uh, August. Th- I, well, I think, I mean, it's it's going to suck <laughs> to go a whole, you know, three quarters of a year without Doctor Who. But I think given the amount of build up that Doctor Who's getting right now in the media, I think there would definitely be a danger of of fatigue setting in. And if they're trying to like launch a new series of Doctor Who like two or three months after the Christmas special or something, the you know I it, the fans would be happy. They'd think, hey, yeah. new Doctor Who. But I think the general public, who who you, the makers of the show should always be targeting first, yeah. would be oh more Doctor Who. God, we just had like eleven months build up of it of non nothing yeah. but Doctor Who. And you're also launching a new Doctor. If Matt Smith yeah. is staying on, I think it would be too long. But if you're launching Peter Capaldi and, and you know, in, in another 50 years of Doctor Who. I think it's it's probably smarter to actually delay that a bit and just sort of, you know, wipe all the, the 50th anniversary stuff out of your mind before you start anew. Otherwise, that, that hangover will sort of affect Capaldi's tenure. And I think he's such a such a brilliant actor and, and, and a new Doctor that you, you don't really want to overshadow him. I thought, I thought perhaps the 11th hour... Um, thankfully, it was one of the best stories ever. But but the launch of Matt Smith's tenure, it was in April of tw- of twenty ten, right, yeah, yeah. was ever so slightly overshadowed by the fact that Tennant and RTD had left, and I and that even that hadn't quite da- died down yet. Mm, yeah. And so I think to give it a little more space in between the two eras would be would be a smart thing. In your opinion, and I know it probably will never happen, but. Uh, would you think it would? Uh, there's a lot of people on Twitter and Facebook and places like that um, on Doctor Who Hub and all the Facebook pages um, asking why can't there be a mini series for Paul McGann? Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, I've seen. There's petitions going there on. Everything, and everything but, uh, who can blame them? I mean, it's wonderful. That's but you know the great thing about showing up for six and a half minutes and then regenerating and then having nothing more is that everyone will always want more <laughs> as opposed to, uh, you know, I imagine that no one would have wanted another, a full series of, of Paul began episodes in 1996 on no. Fox because it would have been terrible. Yes. Um, not because of McGann, just because of the way they produced the show back then. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I mean, I know, of course it's not going to happen just because, it's it takes a lot of money to produce these things. Yes, I'm, it does. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that's why there's no you know there's no Torchwood, there's no um, Sarah Jane Adventures anymore. I think yeah. the money's a little a little you know the well's a little more dry than it was back in the RTD years. So to yeah. to produce them again miniseries or something, you'd probably have to cut into the Doctor Who budget. So you, yeah. if you want a began series, you're only going to get maybe a six episode. Capaldi series and yeah. I love McGann but I cannot wait to see what Peter Capaldi does with the role. Well this is another bit of pill I mean I, I don't know what you've heard but we've been reading that there's 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 the, 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 we're only going to get seven episodes next year, they're going to be shooting 14 but it's going to be shot like uh, so you're going to get seven episodes in 2014 then seven episodes in 2015 that's what we've heard on, the, on our grapevine well, there, I heard a while ago that it was going to be basically an unbroken run of 12 or 13. And Moffat himself has said that there are going to be at least 13 episodes in 2014. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I so kinda... whether, whether that means 12 and the Christmas special or, or 13, maybe even in the Christmas yeah. special, it needs to be seen. Now we've got the trailers. We've had, the, we had our children in need uh, clip from last night. Did you manage to ca- catch that at all? I did, yeah. I, I, it's sad to see that a lot of people were underwhelmed by it, but I think I just that's just because they were just still coming down off the high of the McGann thing. And and really, it's it's the day of the Doctor, and we've we've seen two minutes of it now. And I don't want to see a pivotal moment. You see the beginning of a pivotal moment. I, I really it, upset it, that it, upset me that I did I I to be honest with you, I would have rather yeah. have seen um, a video of Matt Smith doing a children in need thing that he pre-recorded um mm-hmm. you know just but they could have even slipped it in during the making of one of the uh episodes this year um i i really didn't want to see him how he got to meet tenant which is kind of sort of i'd rather have i i, I it kind of i curse myself for watching it because you kind of see it build up and up and up and I, I there was no way in this world i thought they would take you to the point of actually him going through um, whatever he goes through and, and actually landing at the feet of David Tennant. I, I didn't actually think that they would do that. I think that's that kind of annoyed me in a way. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm in two minds about it. I, hmm. I think, 
you know, we we we've, we've seen them together in the trailers, which I think in its in and of itself is kind of a spoiler because you wonder yeah. kind of how they're going to get on. Um. I, it didn't bother me that much. Gotcha. But then again, I only watched it once, and I'm only going to watch it once because yeah. I don't want that part to sort of show up in the actual screening and I go, oh, okay, I've seen this bit about yeah. 18 times yeah. and I can just yeah. sort of turn my mind off for the next two minutes. The biggest thing for me is uh, that I'm really looking forward to is I think the sisters of Khan, do you think they're going to, I mean, there's a, there's a, um, I was talking to a couple of friends about it, a couple of friends who are into Doctor Who, and I would, I've been reading online, there's some really good uh, ways of how he gets back to being the Doctor from being the warrior. Um, do, do, do you think, do you think the sisters of Khan are going to appear in it again? They made a big emphasis about what he could be by drinking that drink and the fact that he was turning into the warrior and then he, sometime he has to turn back into Eccleston's character. That um, well, I think we're uh, gonna. I think we're gonna get a wibbly wobbly, timey wimey twist to, to to the whole thing. Yeah, this is the. I was reading um, Stephen Moffat's comments in Doctor Who magazine, the one that came out um, on November fifteenth, I think it was, and yeah. he said that if if they could have shot the whole thing on the dark side of the moon, and not tell anyone, that's what they have done. Yeah, and they only told people about the Zygons because they happen to be shooting on location, and of course they shot the big bit with the helicopter as well in the middle of like Trafalgar Square, but that's it. Apart from the stuff yeah. that was shot in in public, and so there's so much that's that's that was shot in private that honestly I wouldn't. I would be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised if they actually managed to convince Eccleston to do a regeneration scene from John Hurt to show up at the end of the episode, perhaps with the sister of Karn. Yeah. This is the great thing. You know, there are there I think we're gonna be so surprised because I there's no press screenings, there's nothing. Everyone's gonna watch it at the exact same time yeah. everywhere on earth, which is astounding. And so yeah. I think that they've they've probably planned a few surprises that none of us are really expecting. I think the beauty of particularly Moffitt's writing and then Russell T Davis with Moffitt's writing where you can actually show snippets from pivotal moments from his episodes and not spoil a single thing because he has so many twists and turns and you don't know where about that fits in that clip will fit in. It's not predictable like most television shows. I know I, I, I happen to like Moffitt's, um, approach to the show i think so. there's a few people that uh that for rtd's approach but it's i like the twisty turniness of it i like being surprised and i'm most often surprised by um by moffat scripts and and so you know when i look at the trailer i think oh this could be important but no wait quite no. frankly it might also not be, it it might, be, be a, it might be a no. dull moment yeah, exactly. So, um, so who knows what to expect I, i'd like to see russell t davis come into moffat's tunnel and just do one just write one. It'd be good to have him back for one every series or every two years, just to sort of put his pen to paper again. It would be intriguing, wouldn't it? It'd be like Robert Holmes coming back after uh, being script editor for, of Doctor Who. You know, maybe maybe RTD can throw in a Caves of Angersonti for um, for Stephen Moffat sometime down the exactly. line. Exactly. When Stephen Moffat and all the crew that be, have been interviewed say that this is a this fiftieth is a pivotal moment, and along with the Christmas issue, will send. Um, send Doctor Who in a new direction. I, I, I personally don't take that as a bad thing. I think I think what they've got planned. I, I've I've got a friend who literally in the last six weeks has watched every episode from two thousand and five, and she said wow. that she's not really upset about anything that they're after seeing them all in a block. She's not upset about anything at all that they're going to do because she has so much faith in it. That, that what they're going they're, they're, she's enjoyed it so much and she's enjoyed the ride so much that she really isn't bothered when they say something like that what what's your opinion on it um i think doctor who has built its fan base on people who are accepting of change which is really people who are accepting of life because life changes and so to have this is why the show can go on for 50 years is because mm. it just up and just hits the reset button sometimes and keeps the core elements of the show but just sends it off in a completely different direction. You know, we we overlook sometimes the importance of 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 the early John Pertwee years. Yeah. You know, imagine if they did that today. All of a sudden, that oh, suddenly no, he doesn't even have a TARDIS anymore. He's stuck on Earth with with the military. You yeah. know, we watch it. We can pick and choose and look back and and it just sort of watch whatever story we want this day and age. But to sort of like build up to a new series of that um, would be astounding. Um, and the that they did it then, like seven years into the show, and then of course they 
went off into the stars again. And then the John Nathan Turner era was a huge different shift in direction yeah. as well. I mean, it's done it constantly. So I'm, I'm not worried at all. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm excited by what direction they will take the show in, uh, in the Capaldi reign. I mean, funnily enough, I didn't actually watch the, uh, oh, it slipped out of my head. What's the, uh, when he played the, um, Torchwood. Uh, no, not Torchwood. I've, I've seen him in everything apart from the series where he plays the Spin Doctor. I never watched any of oh, that. Oh, the thick of it. The thick no, of it. No, never watched any of it, believe it or not. I never watched any of it. But I, but, 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 like, local hero. And if you look at him, he's kind of like one of those strange actors that kind of has this energy about him, but doesn't really do a lot, but then can do a lot. And I think a lot of people are saying, oh, because he's older and he's, he's going to be more anchored. And I, And to be honest with you, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I, I don't think he's going to be like that. I think he's going to be still the energetic doctor. I think he's a very energetic guy for his age. And I think, yeah, it is going to tie it down. His age is going to, he is going to bring that experience in with him. But I don't think we're going to actually have a, have a, have a cessation of the, of the running. I think you're still going to have the energy and the running and the vibrancy of the series. Um, but I think he is going to take it in an older direction. But no, I've, I've got total faith we're still going to have the action and the swashbuckling in it. Oh, yeah. I mean, Paul McGann's a year younger than um, Peter Capaldi now. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, and, and he didn't look at all old to me. So no. I, I I don't I don't have any doubt that it's still going to be – it's not going to be – he's not going to be a fuddy-duddy or anything no, like that. No, I There think is it's... such a remarkable energy of him, yeah. And I think a lot of people actually do go, oh, well, hold on, but he's the same age as um, – as same William age Hartnell. as William Hartnell. And I'm thinking, well, no, because uh, I think in that day, I, I, I don't think a lot of people – I think in that day, if you mentioned an old doctor and, and the character that came on, no matter how modern they might do with the music, the titles, as Moffat said on Tuesday on an evening with Moffat, uh, Stephen Moffat, um, it was incredible. But I think they had to anchor that character down to being an establishment doctor figure. And a doctor in those days wasn't a young swashbuckling guy. And he was a guy who'd basically be stayed. But no, I, I really don't think it's going to run out of energy and, and be one of those uh, William Hartnell sort of uh, episodes sort of thing. No, it's going to be one. I'm really surprised you haven't seen that and think of it. But only because I, um, me, like probably many other North Americans, uh, in, I think it came out on, oddly enough, on DVD box set two days after Capaldi was announced as a doctor. And uh, <laughs> Good and marketing. Whole, I know, a whole bunch of North Americans uh, saw their their first re... I mean, of course he was in Torchwood and Doctor Who, yeah. but, but this is the role that, that he's sort of become known for. Yeah. And there's such a, a passion and energy to his performance that yes. you can tell in series one he's sort of there he's kind of a supporting character and by series three he's the main thrust of the show and i think the writers really realize that uh, oh yeah this this is this is someone to base an entire show around and 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 you know i watched that and every time he came on screen it might just because i was expecting or looking out for him knowing he was a doctor it was just magical to but see him come on screen and just own it I don't think he's going to be anything like that, though. Do you know what I mean? I really don't. I'm expecting something that no one is expecting with Peter Capaldi. I really do. Because he's a fan, because he's watched it from the word dot, because he actually knows the Doctor and he enjoys the Doctor, but I really think he's going he's gonna to do something so different. I'll be shocked if he's actually in the vein of what he's done before. I really will. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't. I mean, everyone's saying, oh, it's going to be Malcolm Tucker in the TARDIS, but it won't be. Uh I, I've seen him in that. I've seen him in the two doc, uh, Torchwood and Doctor Who, which are his different performances you can get. Um, I saw him in um, what is it now? Is that little mockumentary about the the studio? Yes, uh, the film that's right. Studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't Cripple, remember which one it was. Cricklewood Greats, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And there's just a one, just you know. And I've seen clips of him uh, in some Da Vinci um, docudrama as well. Yes. And there's an art. There's just a real artistic flair and and thoughtfulness to to him and his approach to things. And even, even his interview when he was um, uh, introduced uh, yeah. on August the 4th, you know, about his just wonderful stuff about everyone made Doctor Who, you know, and this is why it's going on so much. You just, there's so much care and passion and thoughtfulness, yet a, a, a blinding passion and energy as well. And it, there's, there's so many aspects to him because he's a more experienced actor, I suppose. And, and because he's just a, you know, he's, 
he's a bit of a renaissance man as well. He does a lot. I mean, mm. he's won an Oscar for directing a short film for crying out loud that we will get. I don't know what we'll get. I really don't well, know. That's what the we'll beauty get. of it. I, I sort of saw what we were going to get with Matt Smith and believe you me from the word go, I was like, yeah, I love him. I think he's going to be a great doctor, yeah. but he was kind of predictable what he was going to do, not in a bad way, but in a good way. But I think with Capaldi, I, I really, I'm, I don't know what to expect. I really don't. No, no, and I think that's uh, you know I, I kind of expected, knew what to expect from Matt Smith, or was, was excited by it, just based on his interview on, on on Doctor Who Confidential was pretty much all we had to go on. He was a bit batty and crazy and waved his hands around a lot, and I thought we have a true eccentric doctor, but mm-hmm. but we just know that we're going to get a supremely talented doctor with Peter Capaldi, and that's enough to get anyone excited. Where do you think, in the last couple of minutes we've got to on the recording, where do you think it's actually going to go? Where do you think the series is going to uh, shoot off to? Well, how, what direction would you like to see it take? Oh, I've never wanted the series to go off in a direction that I wanted to take because I'm not making the <laughs> show. Um, it's how I've kept my sanity for so long. I'll just sit back and, and accept where they take me because I've I've had faith in the series for so long. I'm not going to demand changes now. But um, the... Uh, the companion doctor relationship will be a, an interesting one, just because of the the, the visual age difference. I mean, mm. there's obviously Matt. You know, Matt, the doctor's over a thousand years old. Yeah. Technically, he shouldn't be fancying fancying a twenty year old uh, girl from London. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Because, well, you know, it's it's kind of been at the core of the series how there's been a sort of romantic interplay between the doctor and companion. Um, either by subtext or overtly. So that'll be interesting because I don't think you would comfortably get away with that sort of thing with with someone who's as old as Capaldi is. Um, So that'll be interesting. And I wonder how that will sort of push the series in a different direction and and what Clara's um, role will be now in in this new TARDIS team because this is the, this is going to be the first companion since Rose to actually bridge uh, a regeneration. Well, it's always interesting. I think I, th- I kind of think Clara's kind of like uh, Clara's in a unique position because she knows the Doctor regenerates. She knows he's got loads of different faces, and I really can imagine very very quickly after the regeneration a comedy moment, some comedy repertoire between the two because of his age, because of what he looks like. He's still the same Doctor. He is the Doctor. She knows he's the Doctor, but he suddenly turned into this older man, and I think that's going to be quite a good bounce off. There always seems to be a comedy. It's almost kind of like to reassure the viewers that, you know, this is a new doctor and everything. Because I think David Tennant had one and Matt Smith was a bit comical too after the uh, the huge grandiose ending of The End of Time. So I wouldn't... It'd be intriguing if they had an actual um, conversation at the end of the Christmas special to, to bridge into the next season. Okay, right. Well, we'll come to the end of the interview. We've done 30 minutes, believe it or not. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably carry on talking to you afterwards for a bit. But uh, that's the end of this 30 minutes recording. Uh, we'll be interviewing other bloggers and people from websites. Uh, Stephen Schapansky, thank you very much. Thank you.